assignment 1.2 and copy the highlights from this document, which we did in class. Would you be able to do that? It will be an additional task, but it's worth it. All right? Yeah. All right. Now, uh, who else has joined us right now? We have... Um... Hi, Anya, you're there? Yes. Hi, and um, Mukul, you're also there? Yes. Hi, all of you. Now, I'm going to... I'm going to take off this uh, screen of my second. Okay. I'm going to go off the video. Now, uh, how was your week, first of all? How was your exercise? How was your experience with the exercise that you did? And um, any learnings, any observations? Honey, you're not well? How are you now? I'm fine. I, now I'm fine. Okay, good. So, Anya, your work was very good. I have kept it as a sample. I copied pasted from your work. This is very well okay. done. Okay. And uh, Mukul, let me check your work. Yeah, Mukul's also was very good. I saw that you had copied exactly as it was required. This is Mukul's. Right? So, this is a good one. We are going to come back to this. Today, after we've done a round of... Uh, catch up i'm going to we're going to do two articles we're going to do just relax as well as sleeping on the job we do the same exercise we did last time which is highlighting the keywords because this is a very important aspect of the training if you get this correct only then can we do the next stage which is the text creation how do we write rewrite the text that you will see later but at this stage i need you to perfect the highlighting the highlighting task all right so before that, Mukul, how was your trip? It was good. Where did you go? I uh, went to Oman. Oman, all right. Okay. Vishwaski, how was your week? It was good. What did you do last week? Did you go somewhere or did you have, or were you busy with school? Yeah, I was just busy with school. Busy with school. Okay. Now, let's... Shall we all begin now? Okay. So, last week we did this. And the result of that is this. Okay. A tabular format. We're going to do the same for sleeping on the job and just relax. Or let's start with just relax and then we'll come to sleeping on the job. Do you think we can do both of them in one session of 45 minutes? Yes? Let's try. Okay. Now, and what we need to do today is we need to do this article. We need to do this article. And then we come back to the table. And I'm going to teach you the next step. What we have to do after putting the notes together. Okay. So the first half, we're going to do highlighting. And the second half, we're going to do analysis of the highlighting. All right, let's begin. So we're going to begin, begin with Anya. Anya, I request you to read the first paragraph. And as you read, or after every sentence for two, tell me what to highlight. Please begin. Okay. Um, hypnosis is an intriguing and fascinating process. Just hold on. One second. Can the others put your, your, your computers on uh, mute, please? Yeah, you can begin now. Hypnosis is an intriguing and fascinating process. A trance-like mental state is induced in one person by another who appears to have the power to command the person to obey instructions without question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what the key word here is. All right, proceed with the next. Hypnotic experiences are described by ancient Egyptians and Greeks. What? Whilst references to deep sleep and anesthesia have been found in the Bible and in the Jewish Talmud. In the mid 1700s, Franz Mesmer, an Australian physician, developed his theory of animal magnetism, which, is, which was a belief that the cause of disease was the improper distribution of invisible magnetic fluids. Mm -hmm. um, animal magnetism, maybe? Okay. But what about it? Disease and improper distribution of invisible magnetic fluids. 
okay so disease was the result of according to whom is that a fact is this a fact uh, that you want us to high, to know and believe and learn or was it franz mesmer's opinion franz mesmer's so unless you put franz mesmer you will mistake your highlights to mean that that is a fact yeah hmm? but if you put franz mesmer animal magnetism disease was an improper distribution of invisible magnetic fluids it means that you're suggesting that somebody called franz mesmer gave this theory yeah okay. proceed mesmer used water tubs and magnetic wands to direct these supposed fluids to his patients mm -hmm. in 1784 a french commission studied mesmer's claims and concluded that these cures were only imagined by the patients mm -hmm. However, people continued to believe in the process of mesmerism, and it was soon realized that successful results could be achieved, but without the need of magnets and water. Okay. Um, French Commission. What did they do? Cures were only imagined by the patients. They concluded that cures were imagined. Concluded. Cures were sorry. Where are we? Just a second. Concluded and cures were only imagined. This is what you wanted. All right, perfect. Go ahead. And okay. in the beginning, hypnosis. Uh, just in a, a trance, like if I could just highlight what hypnosis is, because in this stage they're trying to tell you what hypnosis is. Yeah. Okay, it's a trance-like mental state. Okay, is this good? Does I think so. Yes, it's good. Uh, what about the others? Mukul, Yashasvi, is there something you wish to add in this paragraph? Uh, power to command. Sorry, power to command. Okay, good idea. So you are saying hypnosis is a trance-like mental state, and it gives somebody a power to command. Who and who? Does and that who? mean obey instructions is also a keyword? Sorry, which one? Obey instructions. Okay, power to command, obey instructions. Both of them are suggesting the same meaning. So, if you want to put one or the other, it is sufficient. The as long as the idea is get getting communicated. Okay. But I put both. Okay. Now it's Yashasvi's turn. Okay. The term hypnotism was first used by James Baird, a British physician who studied suggestion and, and hypnosis in the in the mid 1800s. Mm -hmm. He just demonstrated that hypnosis differed from sleep, mm -hmm. that it was a psychological response and not the result of secret not the result of secret powers. Mm -hmm. During this same period, James, uh, James, I don't know how to pronounce the last name. Okay, Estelle. It's actually okay. Es Estelle. James a Scottish mm -hmm. doctor working in India used hypnotism instead of an aesthetic in over two hundred minutes surgical operations including leg amputations mm -hmm. later that century a French neurologist mm -hmm. Jean Chacot successfully mm -hmm. experimented with hypnosis in his clinic for nervous disorders okay what are the keywords uh, Okay, we'll read this again. The term hypnotism. Okay, let's see how it's pronounced. It's not hypnotism, it's hypnotism. Okay, we'll probably do a class on pronunciation and where to stress another time. Before that, just look at this word. Is it physiological or psychological? Physiological. I was physiological. reading it in a rush, so I... That's fine, as long as you understand that it's physiological. And what's the difference between physiological and psychological? 
Um, I'm not sure how to explain. Okay. So psychological relates to your mind. Psyche is the mind. Physio is your body. Physical. Comes from the word physical. So what they're saying is hypnosis is a physiological response. It is not Im imagined. It's real. It's a physiological, um, as in it. It is a it's a phenomenon that occurs in your body. Okay. Now, now we'll read again. I will read, and after each passing sentence, Yashasu, you try and tell me which is the keyword. The term hypnotism was first used by James Braid, a British physician who studied suggestion and hypnosis in the mid 1800s. Okay. Uh, let's say. Um, maybe it could be mental state. Um, sorry, um, there is mental state in this sentence. I didn't come across. No, sorry, I was getting confused with the first one and the second one. Uh, do you agree with what I'm highlighting? First. So the first to study hypnosis was James Braid. Yeah, I think. Yeah. First, James Braid studied mid 18. Okay. Okay. Let's say suggestion and hypnosis. Let's highlight it. Uh, suggestion and hypnosis as well. Yeah. Um... So the first one to study. We are basically giving a history. So the first one to study was James Braid. Next sentence. He demonstrated that hypnosis. I think demonstrated could be one okay let me finish reading the sentence and then you can tell me he demonstrated that hypnosis differed from sleep that it was a physiological response and not the result of secret powers so he demo demonstrated three things hypnosis differed from sleep it was a physiological response and not the result of secret powers yeah so i think you should highlight those three, three? okay Physiological and not, not the result of secret powers. All right. Please read the next. I'll read it. During the same period, James Edale, a Scottish doctor working in India, used hypnotism instead of anesthetic in over 200 major surgical operations. But, uh, James... India, uh, uh, what is this? Surgical operations. He used hypnotism in surgical operations. All right. In India. Fair enough? Yeah. James Edale in India, surgical operations. So he used hypnosis instead of anesthetic. You know what is anesthetic, right? Uh, yeah. Anesthetic is something that is given to the patient so that he doesn't feel pain. Either he goes unconscious or the area which is being operated upon becomes numb. Yeah. But instead of using that, he used hypnosis in surgery, including leg, leg amputations. Okay, we'll not highlight too much. He used, used okay, James Adele used hypnosis in surgical operations. All right, next. Later that century, a French neurologist uh, named Jean Charcot, successfully experimented with hypnosis in his clinic for nervous disorders. So, Jean Charcot is for, what shall we say, for nervous disorders. For nervous disorders. So, we have three users. We have seen three people give, using hypnosis for different operate, for different things. Next. Mukul, can you read the next paragraph and highlight the keywords? Since then, scientists have shown that the state of hypnosis is natural human behavior, which can affect psych uh, psychological, social, and or physical experiences. Okay. The effects of hypnotism depend on the ability, willingness, and motivation of the person being hypnotized. Mm -hmm. Although hypnosis has been compared to dreaming and sleepwalking, it is not actually related to sleep. It involves a more active and intense mental concentration of the person being hypnotized. Mm -hmm. 
Hypnotized people can talk, write, and walk about, and they are usually fully aware of what is being said and done. Right. So now tell me the key words. Natural human behavior. Very good. It's a natural human behavior. Excellent. Then. Uh, ability, willingness, and motivation. It depends on. Yes, depends on ability, willingness of the person. Which person? Being hypnotized. Person being hypnotized. What depends on all this? The effects. The effects, correct. Effects depend on ability, willingness, and motivation of the person being hypnotized. So I will. Should I remove off the person being hypnotized because that is pretty evident, just to remove clutter. Is it okay if we do this, or do you want to want me to highlight off it's the okay person? If you remove. It's okay if you remove. Yes. All right. Please go ahead. Next. Although not related, not related to sleep. Not related to sleep. Very true. Not related to sleep. Excellent. Main points you are getting right this today. Next. Active and yeah. Yeah. Involves mental mental concentration. Very nice. Please go ahead. Can talk, write, and walk about. Yes. Instead of that, I would just say fully aware. People are fully aware. Yeah. If you say fully aware, that covers can talk, write, talk. That the moment I tell you fully aware, will you remember all this these aspects like talk, write, walk, and is yes. aware of what is being said? That word fully aware encompasses everything else that is said in that sentence. Am I right? Uh, yes. So then we stick to only the bare minimum, which helps us to remember. Just remember that a key word is like a peg. A peg is basically like a hook at the back of a door on which you can hang several things. So a hook is what you remember. To, you need to highlight. Once you remember the hook, your mind will automatically remember everything that is associated with that word. That is what a keyword is. Okay. All right. Excellent work, Mukul. Between last class and today, I see uh, it shows that you have really worked on this. Am I right? Did you spend a lot of time on working on on uh, getting this method correct? Not really, but last time I hadn't understood what I'm supposed to highlight. What you're supposed to do. Okay, okay. But there's a huge difference now. Wonderful. Now, Anya, your turn. Oh, Anya is already done one paragraph, right? Yeah, correct. It's Anya's turn again. Go ahead. Okay. Um, there are various techniques used to induce hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Hypnosis. The best known is a series of simple suggestions repeated continuously in the same tone of voice. Mm -hmm. um, series of simple suggestions. How about various techniques? Yeah. Okay. Best known is a sim simple suggestion. What did you say? Mm -hmm. Series of simple suggestions. Very good. Yeah. Then? The subject, the subject is instructed to focus their attention on an object or fixed point mm -hmm. while being told to relax, breathe deeply and allow the eyelids to grow heavy and close. Mm -hmm. As the person responds, their state of attention changes and this altered state often reads to, leads to other changes. Mm -hmm. Often leads to other changes. Okay, but what is this? Um, yeah, what leads to other changes? Altered state. Altered state, yes. Let me see where that is. Altered. Altered state. Okay. We we'll say state of attention is altered. State of attention change. Before that, there are a few keywords. Okay. For example, the person may experience different levels of awareness. And then before like, the previous sentence also must have some keywords. Uh, focus their attention. Yes, focus. Let's say focus. Then, then um, object or fixed point. Relax, relax. And relax. Yes, and then uh, that's it. State of attention changes. So what they're told is to focus, to relax, and relaxation includes breathing and all that. Close their eyelids, whatever. Yeah. They are told to focus on a point, to relax, and then the state of attention changes. Go ahead. 
for example for example the person may experience different levels of awareness consciousness imagination memory and reasoning or become more responsive to suggestions right become more responsive to suggestions okay additional phenomena may be produced or eliminated such as blushing sweating paralysis mm -hmm. muscle tension or anesthesia right uh, additional phenomena may be produced that's it good we'll just put additional phenomena okay all of these changes can occur with hypnosis none of these experiences is unique to it okay. people who are very responsive to hypnosis are also um i can't see that word oh more more responsive to suggestions when they are not hypnotized okay what uh, sorry i what did you miss although these changes can occur with hypnosis none of these experiences is unique to it people who are very responsive to hypnosis are also more responsive to suggestions when they are not hypnotized tell me the keywords please um more responsive to suggestions who is more yeah more responsive to suggestion but we are talking about people who are responsive to hypnosis are also more responsive to suggestion before that in the previous yeah. sentence although these changes can occur with hypnosis none of these experiences is unique experience none of these experiences is unique yeah means mean meaning to say that all the previous things that we've been said don't happen only with hypnosis okay okay so for the time being i'm going to mark that pink because we seem to have missed it we'll understand we'll we'll consider that you did not get it but it is important okay therefore i put it as pink we'll see later okay. maybe in the next class why that line is important go ahead at this stage it's not so important so we can ignore it for now please okay please finish this it. responsiveness increases during hypnotism this explains why hypnosis only takes a few seconds for some whilst other people cannot be easily hypnotized yeah responsiveness increases during hypnotism perfect okay now it is uh, yashashvi's turn after that we have how many just a few more paragraphs and then we'll i will probably do only this one uh, one article today because i need to teach you something about the previous exercise go ahead please okay it it is a common misunderstanding that hypnos hypnotists are able to force Wait, isn't this the one that Anya did? No. Oh. Okay. Anya did this one. You have to do this one. Yeah. It is a common misunderstanding that hypnotists are able to force people to perform criminal or any other acts against their will. In fact, subjects can resist suggestions, and they retain. their ability to distinguish right from wrong okay let's hold there uh, tell me the keywords please um common misunderstanding what is it yeah i think common misunderstanding right um so it's a common understanding that people can be forced next keyword um I'll read it once for you. It is a common misunderstanding that hypnotists are able to force people to perform criminal or any other acts against their will. Um, In fact, subjects can resist suggestions. They can retain their ability to distinguish right from wrong. I think force. Uh, force is already done. Are you able to view the screen? Have you? It's already highlighted. Force people. Common misunderstanding. that hypnotist can force people okay that's already held next line i'm asking in fact subjects can resist suggestions and they retain their ability to distinguish right from wrong i don't think anything from how about this subjects can resist suggestion yeah maybe okay next line 
Uh, should I read it? Yes, yes. Okay. This mis misunderstanding is often the result of public performances where subjects perform ridiculous or highly embarrassing actions at the command of their hypnotist. Right. Hypnotist. Mm -hmm. These people are usually instructed not to recall their behavior after re-emerging from their hypnotic state. Mm -hmm. So it appears that they, they were powerless while hypnotized. Mm -hmm. the, the point to remember, however, is that these individuals chose to participate and, and the success of hypnotism depends on the willingness of a person to be hypnotized. Anything more to be highlighted? Uh, powerless? Yeah, but what about it? Just by itself, powerless means nothing. It appears that they were powerless, but is that what we want to say? These people are instructed not to recall the behavior, so it appears that they were powerless, but is that the truth? When you say it appears to be that way, is that the reality or something that appears to be? That means the truth is not what appears to be, right? Yeah. So, if you just highlight powerless, what will it mean? It will mean nothing because you neither mentioned the topic nor the people involved in that sentence. You've not even spoken about the hypnotist, nor the person being hypnotized. So there has to be some connection between the keywords. Actually, the entire paragraph is only telling you that the person being hypnotized is not does not lose control. And that the hypnotist cannot force the person to do anything against his uh, will. Yeah. That's all it is saying. So maximum I can highlight this, even this is not required, very light, I'll put in yellow. Common misunderstanding, hypnotists force people against their will. Subjects can resist suggestion. Basically, that's all it means. That's all is that is important in this paragraph. Nothing else is important. Anya, Mukul, do you think something else can be highlighted? The last line, depends Which, on willingness. Yes, hypnotist depends on the willingness of the person to be hypnotized. Okay. I'll put it in yellow because that theme is already put up, uh, uh, above. Okay. So it's just a repetition of the same idea. All right. Now it is uh, Mukul's turn. Am I right? Yes, sir. That we have one, two paragraphs. All right. Please proceed. Interestingly, there are different levels of hypnosis. Of hypnosis achievable. Okay. Thus, deep hypnosis can be induced to allow anesthesia for surgery, childbirth, or dentistry. Okay, give me the keywords. Contrast, no. the, keywords. the keywords at, at every one or two sentences. Different levels. Correct. Deep hypnosis. Deep hypnosis. That's it. Deep hypnosis to allow uh, anesthesia. But in the neckline, you can say deeply relaxes the patient. No, one second. This sentence, sentence talks about anesthesia. The deep, thus deep hypnosis can be induced to allow anesthesia for surgery, childbirth, and dentistry. There are different levels. And at which level can anesthesia be achieved? Uh, at a shallow level or at a deep level? Deep level. Yeah. So if, if I just highlight deep hypnosis, but not uh, anesthesia, it will be incorrect. You will not get the correct idea. Now see, when I say deep hypnosis, anesthesia, you get the connection? Yes. Okay, please continue. This contrasts to a lighter state of hypnosis, which deeply relaxes the patient, will then follow simple directions. Yeah, deep hypnosis is for anesthesia. This contrasts to, that means, on the other hand, we are talking about lighter state of hypnosis. Lighter state, what does that talk about? What does that do? Deeply relaxes the patient. And? You will then follow simple uh, That is more important, right? 
relaxes is not so important lighter state will make the person follow simple instructions but deep hypnosis will do what allow anesthesia for surgery which i would attend to do yes so you understand now the importance of the keywords if i do not put follow simple in directions just for a second i'm going to change this okay to gray suppose i had not highlighted that you would not and if i had not highlighted anesthesia you would not get the meaning correctly you will just say different states deep hypnosis lighter state but what does deep hypnosis do what does lighter state do so we need to highlight deep hypnosis anesthesia light hypnosis simple follow simple directions does it make sense now do you see the connection of the keywords yes sir okay perfect so hypnosis also i'll highlight or i can say instead of deep state i'll say deep hypnosis does it make sense and the word contrast they are making the difference between deep and light that's why we need the word contrast what does deep hypnosis do what does light hypnosis do please proceed this latter state may be used to treat mental health problems mm -hmm. as it allows patients to feel calm while simultaneously thinking about distressing feelings or painful memories yes uh, treat mental problems yeah. mental health problems yes what can be used to treat mental health problems which state the lighter hypnosis exactly state. exactly go ahead thus patients can learn new responses to situations or come up with solutions to problems mm -hmm. Uh, learn new responses. Yes. The whole line or only learn new responses. Um, patients can learn. Okay, whatever you feel, I'll remove that. Learn new responses. Excellent. This can help recovery from psych psychological conditions such as anxiety, depression, or phobia. Yes. Recovery from psychological conditions. Very much. Excellent. sometimes after traumatic incidents memory of the events may be blocked mm -hmm. for example some soldiers developed amnesia mm -hmm. as a result of their experiences during war time mm -hmm. soldiers develop amnesia yes soldiers develop amnesia very good or just say loss of memory yeah that's fine i think that's a good thing your your choice is better yes mm. through hypnosis these can be these repressed memories can be retrieved and treated memories can be retrieved and treated as well and treated mm -hmm. a variation of this treatment involves age regression when the hypnotist uh, takes the patient back to a specific age mm -hmm. in this way patients may remember events and feelings from the time which may affect which may be affecting their current well being right none of it is important you have already said that repressed memories can be retrieved so the, for the, after that is only an example for so example is not important just take a look anya is this uh, a bit difficult for you yashasvi are you finding this difficult no it seems fine okay do you do you, do you although I, i think age regression would be a, a key word in this still okay Uh, in what way but if you just say age regression it doesn't give you an idea if you say age regression age regression then you must say something connected with that as well so i would do this age regression uh remember even and which may be which may be affecting their current well being this would make better sense okay but yeah. this is already if you go back to the highlighted word repressed memories can be retrieved and treated isn't that what he is saying isn't it a repetition of the same idea yes yes so is it required not surely because we've already said it once and sometimes we say something and then we enhance and elaborate on the same point when that happens you don't need to highlight okay now uh anya what i'm going to ask you to, or sorry yashasvi what i'm going to ask you is 
for this particular paragraph that you will just help me highlight only the highlighted words and when you highlight just tell me yes do you understand and remember the rest of the points at each at each point the different levels deep hypnosis anesthesia lighter hypnosis follow simple discussion directions do you understand what it is dealing with do you remember yeah excellent now similarly read the next highlight uh treatment follow simple directions okay after that treat mental health problems so what does that mean when you say treat mental health problems what are we saying um like who treats mental health problems or what treats mental health problems or let me highlight used to treat mental health problem let me add that dimension what does that say now used to treat mental health problem what are we talking about um that Sorry. We're talking about hypnosis, right? Yeah. Okay. So in that, after hypnosis, in this paragraph, how we have distinguished between two kinds of hypnosis. What are those? You can read the highlight. The like two words highlighted. Deep, deep, deep yes. Deep hypnosis and. and lighter hypnosis correct what does deep hypnosis do and what does lighter hypnosis do deep would be like okay read the second sentence like... paragraph second sentence of this paragraph So deep would be. Are you see? Do you see the screen, Anya? Is, uh, is it? Uh, sorry, uh, Yashashwi, is the is the screen visible to you? Yeah. Okay. So just read this. What I've highlighted. Deep hypnosis can be allowed. Uh, no, deep hypnosis can be induced to allow anesthesia for surgery, childbirth, or dentistry. Correct. So, what does deep hypnosis do, or what does it help in? It it allows anesthesia. Correct. What does light hypnosis do? Uh, light. Okay. Read this sentence. This contrasts to lighter state of hypnosis, which. which deeply relaxes a patient who will then follow simple directions so when you make people do some uh, uh, when you make people do things at what stage of hypnosis is that is it a deep level or a light level light yes and what else this latter state may be used to treat what mental health problems correct right. how and what else does it help it'll make the patients calm and the next highlighted word or keyword uh patients can learn new responses to situations and recovery from psychological conditions yes and last one Uh, repressed memories can be retrieved and treated do you know the word retrieved yeah like you understand it yeah good now who would like to do this next paragraph anya yeah go ahead 
Physicians also have made use of the ability of a hypnotized person to remain in a given position for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. Physicians have made use of the ability of a Okay, I'm not sure what the key word here is. Read, read one more sentence to get a better sense. In one case, doctors had to graft skin onto a patient's badly damaged foot. Yes. Um, Physicians, they yeah. use, use it for what? Remain in a given position for long periods of time. Okay, so I just highlight this much. Remain in a given position. Then, how about graft skin? Yeah. So now it gives you a sense. Physicians use to remain in a given position. Person to remain. Okay, makes better sense. Okay. Person to remain in a given position. Graft skin. Next sentence. First. First skin from the person's abdomen was grafted onto his arm. Then the graft was transferred to his foot. Mm -hmm. With hypnosis, the patient held his arm tightly in position over his abdomen for three weeks. Then over his foot for four weeks. Even though these positions were unusual, the patient at no time felt uncomfortable. Right. Do you need to highlight anything else or is the, uh, is the, the basic keywords sufficient to remember what it's about? I think I can remember it with these keywords. Sufficient then. Let's go to the last. Yashashri, would you like to read the last paragraph and highlight the keywords? Okay. Go ahead, please. Hypnosis occasionally has been used with witnesses and victims of crime to enable people to remember important clues mm -hmm. such as criminals' physical appearance mm -hmm. or other significant details that might help solve a crime. Yes, there are many keywords here. I mean, quite important keywords. Yeah. Please tell me. Um, I'll read once more. So, hypnosis occasionally has been used with witnesses and victims of a crime to enable people to remember important clues such as the criminal's physical appearance or other significant details that might help to solve a crime. So it could be witnesses and victims. Um, mm -hmm. To enable people, yeah, to remember important clues and... That's important. That's enough. And what are the clues usually? Will be the appearance or the details of the crime. What happened and who did it. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Please proceed. However, as people... However, as people can both lie and make mistakes while hypnotized, the use of hypnotism in legal situations can cause serious problems. The moment you see however, the word however, please mark it very seriously. Because whatever is said before that, they can say the opposite after that. Okay? So what are they saying? I'm going to highlight it for you now. This is important. So although on one hand they're saying... Hypnosis can be used with witnesses and victims to remember important clues, but it can cause serious problems in legal situations because they can lie or they can make mistakes. So it's a serious thing to remember. Go ahead. Now you continue independently. Also, hypnosis cannot make a person divulge secret information if if they don't want to. Right. What shall we highlight? Yeah, I don't know if that is a very important point. You don't think? Okay. We'll leave it as uh, yellow for the time being and we'll discuss it in class. Okay. Then go ahead. This was confirmed by the Council of Scientific Affairs of the American Medical Association, which yes. 
which in 1985 reported that memories refreshed through hypnosis may include inaccurate information, false memories, and confabulation. Go ahead. Tell me the keywords. Inaccurate information. Yes, they could be inaccurate. And false memories. False, yes. Or false memories, good. And I don't think anything else is very important. You're right, because confabulation also can be... Uh, is a, Okay, confabulation means something that they've cooked up themselves. So, shall we highlight that as well? Fact, okay. A fact and fantasy combined. But when you're saying inaccurate and false memories, I think it covers. You're right. I agree with you, Yashasvi. Very well done. Very well done. Excellent. Now, you have another task. Whatever we did for the first one, you have to do for the second one. You copy and paste that table in a Word document. But make sure it's in, the lay in this layout. Uh, like this. Okay? Uh, Yashasvi, you have done it in a portrait mode. Please try to do it in a landscape mode so that the table is broad. Okay? Now... So today we'll finish. We've done one. We'll not do it for now. Sorry, Mukul, you have a question. What is macro proposition on the last table? Yeah, I'm coming to that. Today we're, we're coming to that. Now, you all have done this. Okay. And we're going to discuss what macro and micro are. These are just technical words which you don't need to understand, but we are going to talk about it nonetheless. What we are going to do now. I want you to take a look at this. Okay. You have this. You see it as a as a clutter of words, and some words are very important, which we have highlighted. What you have done next is you highlighted the key words one below the other and classified them into sections A, B, C, D, E, which correspond to the paragraph numbering. Okay. Now we are going to do two or three paragraphs. Mukul, could you please read the first three points of para A? Or rather, the first three points so of the first plane paragraph A. So, survivor, plane crash, and Amazon jungles. What do you remember from these three points? So, there was this soul survivor in a plane crash, and she ended up in an Amazon jungle. Yeah, who was this? Uh, Julian or someone. Yeah, the name is not so important. So this article was about what? What do you remember from this? When you see soul survivor, plane crash. What does soul survivor mean? What happened in the plane crash? And where did she... Plane crash, she was the only survivor. She was the only survivor. Let's read the next paragraph point. Could you read please, Mukul? Horf horrific storm, lightning, nose drive, plane breaks. Trap to rope seats, mm -hmm. three fall, lose consciousness. Yes, correct. So now tell me, what is the, what what do you remember from these points? So the plane went through a horrific storm. It got struck by lightning. It fell into a nose dive. The plane broke, and she was trapped to a row of seats. And then she was free falling, and then when she hit the ground, she lost. Consciousness. She lost consciousness after hitting the ground or while she was falling? I think while she was falling. Right. Yashasvi, you had seen the points as well of paragraph B. Horrific storm, lightning, nose dive, plane breaks, strapped to a row of seats. Do they help you to recollect what happened in that, uh, in that paragraph? Yeah. Can you please re recount what, what happened in this story? So there was a horrific storm and there was lightning. Mm -hmm. The plane went in a nose dive mm -hmm. and the plane breaks. Mm -hmm. And Julian was still strapped to a row of seats. Excellent. And she was free falling. Yes. And she loses consciousness. In why did she lose consciousness? Does anyone remember? Uh, uh, it was.
just because the uh, seat belt was squeezing her stomach. Excellent, excellent. Now let's go back to paragraph. Oh, let's do one more paragraph and then we'll come to this. Anya, let's read the key points of paragraph C. Okay. Um, awoke hours later, fractured bone in the neck, concussion, and deep cuts in her no, leg and back. No, no. Paragraph C. Oh, that one. Survived factors, strong updraft, spiraling movement, canopy of trees, maze of vines, slowed. So the strong updraft, spiraling movement, canopy of trees, and maze of vines are the factors mm -hmm. which uh, slowed her, the fall, which is why she survived. Imagine that I have not read this article. What does this strong updraft mean? What is the meaning of spiraling movement? What is the meaning of canopy of trees? I don't know this. Can you explain? So imagine that a student has come from your class and she wants to join this class, but she was not there in the last class. Today I'm saying, Anya, can you please explain to her so that she catches up so that I don't lose time in this class? How would you explain to her? Okay. Um, Who survived? Ju Julianne. Yes. So she... what did she survive? The um, plane crash. Right. How? Because of these factors that combine to save her. Tell what are those factors? Strong updraft means what? Updraft of what? Um, I don't remember that. Okay, no problem. Spiral movement of what? Of the um. The row of seats. Excellent. It's kind of a spiraling movement, which is why the seats slowed. Yes. The yes. fall slowed. Yes. That's why. And the canopy of trees also helped slow the fall. And so did the maze of vines. Absolutely. So the maze of vines. Why? Where do we find all this canopy of trees and the maze of vines? Where was all this? In the Amazon jungle. Yes. And you know that the Amazon jungle is a dense forest. So there'll be lots of tree cover. And therefore, yeah. she didn't fall directly on the on the ground, but she was protected by the wind, by the spiraling movement of the row of chairs, because she was heavy on one end of the uh, row, and the rest of the rows were empty. So yeah. she was spiraling around, and so the speed uh, slowed down. Then the canopy of trees prevented her from hitting directly; that further protected her. And then, even as she went through the canopy of trees, there was a maze of vines. All these all these factors slowed her fall, and therefore she survived. Okay. Now you have, just look at the three paragraphs. Tell me what paragraph C is about. Uh, paragraph C is about the factors that saved her. What is paragraph B about? Anya, can you tell me? Um, Sorry, uh, Yashasvi, can you tell me? Horrific storm, lightning, nose dive, plane breaks, strapped to row of seats, free fall, lose consciousness. What is this paragraph about? Uh, what all happened? Like Very good. What happened in the crash? And uh, Yashasvi, can you also tell me what paragraph A is about? That she survived it. Yeah. So how would you explain what, to somebody when he asks, what is paragraph A about? It's about Julian surviving it. Yes. So can I say it is an introduction? Yeah. To the story. Right? Yeah. Okay. Mukul, can you answer your own question? What is a micro proposition? What's a micro proposition? Do you see the difference? All the points of the micro proposition column are summarized by the first, the previous micro paragraph. Points. Micro prop. Do you understand what it means? All the points are about introduction to the story. In paragraph B, all the micro propositions are about what happened in the crash. In paragraph C, all the micro propositions are about the factors that saved her. So do you now understand the micro proposition and what the micro proposition put together is? Exactly. 
it's the main idea of the main ideas first of all what you have done is from the every paragraph you've taken out the main ideas all the details all the micro propositions and you've collected them in one place now from these you have further refined it to make either what you call a summary or an overview or the main idea of the main ideas that is a macro proposition anya in your mind does it become clear what a mac what's the difference between macro and micro yeah what can you explain in your own words uh micro is all the small points but uh, macro proposition is just um, using all the small points into one sentence perfect so can we say micro is a minute points the smaller points the detailed points and macro is the larger point yes perfect uh, yashasvi can you explain what a macro and a micro proposition is i think the macro proposition would be like like the bigger point which yes. says about what all the smaller points is about is about good so now if you want to sound like a linguist you can use the word macro proposition otherwise you can simply say main point and details or you can say a header if you had to make section headers you would use this the main point right so i am still going to call it macro propositions because we want to sound a bit scientific and we will call this micro propositions okay so now you know what i am asking you to fill up so your task will be you continue this exercise of summarizing the key the key points of every paragraph in one sentence or a phrase a short phrase for example factors that saved her this is not even a sentence it's just a phrase what happened in a crash in the crash an introduction to the story just think of a small phrase that summarizes the key points that you have collected can can this be done by tomorrow or day after tomorrow hello yeah yeah okay now we are going to do this for just relax what you sorry uh, you are going to do this uh, this this macro proposition exercise you are going to do for survivor from the sky for just relax you are going to create the table first would you be able to do that as well yes sir yes do not do the macro proposition yet for just relax your task is only to transfer the points you just copy paste the points that we have discussed today in the micro propositions you do only micro propositions for just relax and the macro propositions 